वेलकम टू एपिसोड 44 ऑफ न्यू इंडियन वुमन पॉडकास्ट एयरिंग फर्स्ट इन लेट जून 2021 एंड आई एम योर होस्ट कृष्णा बाय द टाइम दिस एपिसोड एयर्स आई होप वी इन इंडिया आर आउट ऑफ द वर्स्ट सिनेरियो ऑफ द सेकंड वेव ऑफ द पेंडेमिक मेनी ऑफ अस मे बी इन द थ्रोस ऑफ ग्रीफ हैविंग लॉस्ट लवड वंस एंड स्टिल कमिंग टू टर्म्स विद इट मेनी ऑफ अस मे सी आरसेल्स लकी to have family members or ourselves survive the ordeal i really hope and pray you get the energy to face what you are going through at this point of time when we come to the more mundane matters many of us may be struggling with the never ending demands of cooking and what else but cleaning along with her regular work during the first lockdown it was some kind of a challenge dealing with an unprecedented situation and we all try to learn knowing this is a temporary phase but in the second wave the burden seems to be more heavy so i felt it makes sense to share some tips with respect to this burden of cleaning how to lighten this burden let us examine what all is feasible i am reasonably sure that you will find at least a few ideas that you would like to try out cleaning has always been a burden not just now but even before the pandemic so i was not surprised when i received request from many listeners to have an episode on this topic yes this is the second most requested topic what is the number one topic requested that is for another day let us get on with the episode i would like to share some practical tips for you First of all why should you even bother about cleaning and your approach to it you may wonder why should you examine this of course all of us can continue to be how we are with whatever is a level of cleaning or mess we have we can continue to live the same way and there is no problem in that especially if you are happy about it you may be interested in this topic for three reasons first you want to improve how you run your house and how you rear your children and you are open to inputs the second reason you value your time and you want to make sure you put your time where it matters the most cleaning is one area where it will never end the work will just expand to fill time and dust or dirt or becoming unclean is just a part of life you need to decide if that is what you want to do most of the time and the third reason why you would be interested in this topic is to know that you can be happy with your definition of what you want without cleaning being a herculean task you can decide your optimum level and be happy about the immediate environment around you your home now what is the first step in your approach to cleaning The first step is you need to be clear on the outcome. You need to have a vision for your house. When it comes to cleaning or more specifically a clean house, what is the image that comes to your mind? I bet either it is of a home that looks beautiful with good decor and picture worthy like how they show the houses in ads or in interior decor magazines or Pinterest. or it is of a home that is so messy with things piled up all over the place right first and foremost we should realize that these are two extremes we can aspire for our house to be like the first category picture worthy definitely we don't want our house in the other extreme of things getting piled up and messy if your aspiration is to have a picture worthy house remember one thing it takes a lot of effort be prepared for it what gets shown in these pictures are what god created for that moment for a photo or an ad shoot yes there may be houses like that are you ready for the effort it takes to achieve and sustain that if yes go for it the most practical way would be to settle for something in between these two extremes 
and this itself is a wide range. Now let us look at what all you should factor when you define what you want your house to be. One important factor is your life stage. Are you married? Are you a young mother or a mom with older children? Are you single or living with roommate or parents? Such factors. For example, I hear so many young mothers talk about their concern of not having the house in order. If you have young children in the house, you are likely to find toys in all rooms. I would say that is a sign of a lived-in house. Another factor is the engagement of family members. Do you have family members who are not aligned with your views? Say, older family members whose idea of convenience may show in newspapers and various kinds of papers and books on the living room center table. Teenagers who, you know what I mean, right? The kind of help you have in the house is another factor. Do you have household help or a maid or do your family members help you in cleaning the house? What kind of lifestyle do you lead? Are you someone who travels a lot? Not in these times but under regular circumstances. Or are you someone who has a hectic job? What is your personality type? Does a clean house motivate you or make you happy? Or you feel you have to have a clean house? Otherwise, it's a problem. What problems are you facing now because of the current state of your house? It may be that you're feeling bad about how your house looks. Or you may be struggling with not knowing where to keep things. Or you may be losing precious time searching for things. Or sometimes it may be forcing you to postpone things because a simple task has become a huge one because of the way things are structured. For example, if changing the bed cover or tablecloth is something you cannot do in 5 minutes because of its current status, you know what I mean, right? When you decide what you want, remember one important thing. Your house is for shared experiences, for living together. In the journey to make it picture worthy, you don't want to convert it into a museum, right? So what is it that you want for your house? At a more practical level, what do you want each room of your house to look like for you to feel it is clean? Imagine it. Write it down if that helps. Examine if it is practical for your context. For example, for me in my living room, I don't want things other than what is supposed to be there. I don't want magazines, newspapers lying around. Nor do I want anything that we get from outside, like a helmet or a badminton racket or bills or packets. But how to reach there? We will examine that shortly. But you got an idea of what I mean when I say, decide on what you want for each of your room. What is the level of cleanliness you want for your rooms? Actually, it would be a good idea to pause this podcast and get on with defining this for whichever room causes you the most heartache. And I see many of you deciding the living room to be that room. Now that you have imagined or envisioned your house or at least uh, the most difficult room in your house, let us look at what is your current level and target level of cleaning to reach that vision. I hear many of my friends say this often. When I ask them, how was your weekend? They say, I spent a lot of time cleaning the house. What exactly do we mean when we say cleaning? I would say there are four levels of cleaning. Level one is the basic level of hygiene. Are things in a state where it can affect the health of the people in the house? Let us look at what all comes under this. First is food items in various stages. Food that is not covered properly after cooking or even waste food for that matter that attracts cockroaches, houseflies and all those. It is one thing to keep a bowl of fruits on the dining table. It looks beautiful, but after a day or two, these fruits do attract flies and need to be covered with a net or something. 
food being eaten on the bed on the sofa etc leading to food particles falling there attracting these flies germs and all that and another thing is food kept for long in the fridge especially in indian context where there are bound to be frequent power failures food items kept in the fridge need to get cleared and the fridge needs to get cleaned then we come to food items kept open within the fridge yeah lot of ads show that but in reality food is meant to be kept covered inside the fridge if the food situation is okay the cleaning around the food situation is okay we need to look at how clean the bathrooms toilets wash basin and the area where you keep your waste bins are you may not have beautiful plants in the bathroom or the tiles may have salt water stains but are they cleaned frequently with soap or disinfectants and allowed to dry is the same true for buckets your scrubbers washcloths towels you use around the house third is dust and dirt around the house i am referring to the basic sweeping mopping of the floors and the surfaces you are bound to touch frequently are they cleaned often and here if there are toddlers who keep putting their hands and everything they lay their hands on frequently into the mouth you need to focus on this hygiene more if there is no one likely to be licking their hands or putting things into their mouth it is okay if some of the surfaces that are in eyesight but not frequently used like the showcase like the bookshelves etc if they gather some dust to what extent that should be a priority is your call this also includes what you wear and what you use like bed covers pillow covers table cloths but definitely not curtains and things that you don't sit on or touch frequently so getting these washed dried folded and kept inside for use the next time is part of the basic level of cleaning an important tip here is to examine what are the things that attract dust and require cleaning and keep them covered I don't keep beautiful knickknacks outside on display. It may look beautiful, but I personally feel it is not worth dusting them frequently. I would want all the flat surfaces to be swipe friendly. Just take a cloth and you should be able to swipe and clean them. If you see concerns around this level 1 or basic level of hygiene in your house, re-examine your vision for the house. to ensure you are able to easily address the basic level this is crucial friends any visioning is relevant only after the basic level is achieved to get there you may have to take steps like deciding who will do what hiring a household help and even the frequency of doing things this is where getting into a routine is most helpful There are quite a few YouTube videos that lay out this list and help in defining the routine. Most of them tend to focus on very elaborate cleaning. You may want to look up for videos in the Indian context for ideas, but remember, what gets on to your routine should be driven by what all you want as part of the basic level. If you are new to this, don't get on to any elaborate cleaning. Believe me, This is the easiest level and if you can afford it please please do have a household help or a maid to do this The basic level of cleaning is the one that should take minimum of your time because you need not be the only person who does it and your expertise may be of value somewhere else Level 2 is about things having a home of their own the basic idea here is to decide a home for every single category of things in your house and to keep the things there easily said than done please refer to one of the earlier and very popular episodes on this topic in fact i think we discussed this in the very first episode of this podcast if you ask me amongst all the levels i feel this is the toughest one deciding the home for each category of things is one part it's kind of easy but making sure we keep things in its designated place 
that is not so easy remember this has to be followed by everyone in the family at the outset you may feel this is being followed in the house i would suggest two signs first sign is if i tell you right now i'm giving you 20 minutes for quick cleaning of your house or someone you admire is going to come home in 20 minutes what are you likely to clean i bet you're going to rush around keeping things back in its place second sign that things are not in their home is if your family spends time searching for things be it the passport size photos that you got printed last time or that yellow woolen shawl you remember having collected from the dry cleaner most of us indians have a tough time with this level guess why because we tend to hoard things over time our cupboards get filled with clothes that we very rarely wear things we feel we may need later including bundles of plastic covers appliances that are not working like an old iron box or a mixy jar and what not so we use up all our storage space and what we want to use often they lie all around us i have seen kitchens which have rows and rows of empty bottles in the cupboard and the pickles and the sauces are all kept on the dining table and that makes it very difficult to clean the dining table as per our basic level you can extend this funda to any room if you browse for an article or video you will end up finding so many ways of decluttering wherein they will ask you to empty the entire cupboard and then sort out stuff the very thought of doing that makes me want to postpone the whole activity even if i engage the entire family i feel half way down one cupboard they will just run away and i'll be stuck with this whole thing what i want to suggest is something else start from what is lying around the house because there is no designated home for it and then decide where will be the most convenient place for it let us look at an example if there is a cupboard near the dining table where you have stored all the empty bottles and you feel that shelf is the best place to easily access pickles and sauces remove the empty bottles put them in an unused bucket or a carton and start feeling the relief of having a nice dining table that is easy to clean and remains that way now coming to that carton of unused bottles decide you will not store say more than 4 and donate the rest you need to take this approach one thing at a time to find the designated home for each category of things but even then everyone in your family is not going to keep things there so long as you are there to pick up after them so if you are someone who searches things for the family members first stop that tell them this is where they need to keep stuff and you will not help in searching you will find things lying around despite all these threats the important thing is that you need to wean yourself from keeping things back in their place slowly reduce the extent to which you do this you may find this irritating at first bear with it and then start linking things to be done only after things are kept back in their homes for example if all of you are planning to watch a movie on a sunday afternoon you need to ask for the keeping back stuff to be completed before all of you sit down do not expect this to happen in one go lot of patience and tolerance is required for this level another point about the basic level and the second level is that this is where you should use multitasking a lot you may see many articles around the need to focus on only one task at a time of late multitasking has been looked down upon i agree to that view for many other areas when it comes to cleaning multitasking brings in a big difference you could do a lot of cleaning while doing cooking or while on a long phone call i love listening to podcasts especially on travel or some totally new topics when i am cleaning it helps to make sure there is an end time to the cleaning task while at the same time i am enjoying this experience of listening to something i find interesting mm-hmm. 
Level 3 is all about you feeling happy. This is where you use your vision for the house that we discussed at the start. And here there are some tips that will help you. Like me, if you do not want things to be strewn around in the living room, you may want to change the position of the table such that dumping stuff there is not easy. Another option is to minimize the flat and exposed surfaces around the house. Flat surfaces somehow attract dumping. How can you minimize that? Keeping one or two small artifacts is one option. Another option is to have some fancy kind of storage box or basket on top so that at least you can cover it. This is where your creativity comes to the fore. Here, you will be able to identify what is likely to work in your context. You can try out many options. I love folding clothes as per Marie Kondo's technique. But choose to do that only for my clothes. It would take ages to do that for everyone's clothes. Not at all relevant if they are not particular about it. If you are someone into art and craft, you could put that to use. To decorate your house. To make every corner look special. Look at what makes you happy. David Allen of the popular Getting Things Done book said, If you want motivation, then go clean a drawer. I like that suggestion. For me, cleaning a small space, a cupboard or a wardrobe makes me happy and excited and energized to do other things. Vision for the house is something you should do one room at a time. Sometimes, while getting there, you may realize that the vision needs to be tweaked. For example, your vision may involve having the bookshelf with books sorted by color or height and neatly displayed. But you may realize that your current bookshelf violates the basic level. It may be an open shelf which facilitates a lot of dust accumulation. Oftentimes, I see interviews of people where behind them stacks of books are lined up. I get excited and would like that to be the vision for my study area. But I will never implement it because I realize I will be more worried about the books getting dusty and I do not want to spend time dusting books. I would rather read them. So that vision doesn't apply or it's not relevant for me. So the biggest tip here is about getting practical, relevant to one's own context and if that means changing your vision for a particular room, go for it. It may be a good idea to plan some kind of focused deep cleaning as they call it aligned with any specific season of the year. There are these customs around cleaning up before Diwali or Christmas, Sankranti etc. If in your lifestyle doing something like that together as a family is too difficult, you may want to engage some cleaning services. For me, more than the cleaning that gets done, I think you will get the peace of mind during the rest of the year that at least once or twice a year, this kind of deep cleaning will take care of all the sore spots in your house that you are not focusing upon regularly. By the way, did I tell you that level 3 is completely optional? You need not have a vision for your house at all. The first two levels are good enough. You should go for level 3 if deep within you, you feel bad about your house in terms of how not clean or messy it is. Now, level 4 is truly optional. This is where you want to make it picture worthy. Yes, the intent is not to create a museum, but a living house that looks picture perfect. If you are keen on that, well go ahead and pursue it. Remember, a lot of time and effort needs to go into this. I am reminded of a couple who got a lot of interior decoration done involving glasswork and every day they spend some time cleaning up each area so that the glass is shining through and every now and then they change the decor. Well, it's their priority and works for them. Great. I wouldn't want that for myself. The key thing again is to see what your level 4 would be and whether you want to be there. Sometimes you may decide, not now when I have my own house or when the kids are older or when whatever. You may have your own list. (music) 
overall the idea is you need to look at which level you are in and where you want to be have you completed that basic level are all the things having a home of their own then you are in level 2 level 3 is about your creativity and what makes you happy and level 4 is the eventual the final vision to be picture worthy that may not be the final vision for you that's okay coming on to another important question is this your journey alone i would say no it's important to involve every family member if that is not feasible you need to involve especially your children regardless of whether it's a boy or a girl traditionally world over cleaning comes as part of the so called third shift for the woman it's considered her responsibility to organize things clean things and make the house presentable that's why you would see books products and videos primarily from women for women if this is true worldwide we can imagine how it is for indian women the responsibility of running the household with focus on keeping the house clean falls squarely on the woman's shoulders it need not be that way but for vast majority of us that is the truth the only way that can change is by involving children right from their childhood especially boys they won't like it but that doesn't matter these are responsibilities once they get used to sharing the responsibility of cleaning with you there are multiple advantages first they get used to a clean environment and that becomes part of their life second they do not look down upon the cleaning task as something below them and that also reflects on their attitude towards people who clean and third they get so used to it that they know how to do it efficiently you need to be very smart about how you engage family members with people other than your children including your partner and other elders do not approach it as if you are changing them you were just trying to engage them in a task that needs to be done together if you were tempted to get into this emotion it's only my responsibility and you don't care believe me nothing is going to happen mostly for rest of them whether a table is clean or not may not matter at all and often by doing things especially picking up after your family members you are bound to feel taken for granted especially women who are not employed tend to start picking up after family members and soon everyone settles into that rhythm and even expect this from her you were doing this every time you are making the bed putting the clothes left behind in the bedroom or bathroom into the washing machine washing everyone's plates after every meal clearing the living room and keeping newspapers books chargers everything back in its place Yes as being part of a family we all do this for each other especially when someone is not well or needs help but if you were doing this because this is what you were expected to do due to your gender or role in the family it's time to examine this for your own sake and for the sake of what principles your children are growing up seeing remember by picking up after your children you were not doing them a favor you were causing more damage when you involve your family members especially your children they may not do it as perfectly as you do but that's okay you should be more open and accommodating how to achieve the vision for your clean home The biggest input on how you can achieve the vision for your home is not about using any special gadgets or knowing some cleaning techniques. These gadgets and techniques will definitely help, no doubt. But what is the biggest thing that will make a difference is your approach to cleaning. Your mindset actually. You need to let go of many things. You may pride yourself in being perfect about how you do stuff. and that will only increase your workload and tension 
the more you let go and be relaxed about this you are going to be more fun to be with and here i am saying this from my own personal experience i know how i was obsessive about cleaning itself and also about how i would find it perfect only if it is done by me sometimes keeping a clean and beautiful home becomes part of our identity the need to be the person who is ideal homemaker but is that what you want to be if it is well and good that is the default mode you have got into then i invite you to step back think about these points and decide on what you want to be the approach towards cleaning think about it whose certificate do you want and in the current pandemic when not a single person is likely to visit your home has your attitude to cleaning changed your approach to cleaning can be assess or focusing on the specific reasons that we examined earlier to improve to invest your time better and to be happy with your own definition of your clean home i invite you to engage in this approach involving the first step of vision for your house the second step of knowing your current and the target levels we saw and talked about four levels who all should be responsible in your family and how to achieve the vision i hope you found this episode interesting and i hope it helps in your journey with actionable steps that make you and your family more happy thank you i look forward to hearing from you on your thoughts around this what you have done in this area and what you plan to do yes let us converse around this in our facebook page or write to me at krishna@thenewindianwoman.com at